what is probably the catalyst <clears throat> for pushing things like this? In our country, as you're talking about, there's parallels. There's the Donald Trumps of the world. There's the fringe of the Republican Party that's pushing things, and we're afraid of Muslims. We're afraid of those damn Mexicans. And all these constant things we keep saying. But we know, we've seen how there's, uh, there's news sources that do things like that here that spark those kinds of debates, that say off-the-wall things, get people's general racism boiling. And I guess from a glib American point of view, we think that that doesn't happen as much in other places as we see it changing over here mm -hmm. because we're like, oh, well, they don't do things the way we do it here. Even though we like to go, you know, USA, USA, we're the best, we're the best, there's still a thought that we do things a different way and they still don't go crazy like that. Mm -hmm. So this sounds way too exact as to what's happening here. It, it seems to me like that is generally true, at least in the UK. I mean, the conservatives are conservative, but not that conservative compared to traditionally Republicans here. And they don't use the same sort of constant race-baiting tactics election after no. election. Um, like, Britain first is, is one thing. The UKIP is another thing. Mm -hmm. um, they're not the same, and obviously even uh, th those parties, uh, although they might have had successes in recent elections, they haven't been operating you know, in a widespread way over the past 20 years um, with a lot of influence, whereas obviously the Republicans represent theoretically half of the entire country. And we see the strain of everything that you described in Donald Trump and some of the other candidates. I mean, Donald Trump's the most out-and-out -out version of it, but Ted Cruz was saying absolutely horrendous things about carpet bomb bombing civilians mm -hmm. and needing to yep. stop immigration and everything. And then you see it in various elections throughout Europe. Now, thankfully, in some cases, even recently, they've rejected some of the most um, extreme xenophobic parties. But in some countries, those parties are gaining power. And you can find that throughout the world. I mean, whenever the economy isn't doing all that well, and there's, historically, it's, it's military uncertainty. It's the, the prospect of war or you're in a war. And now we don't even need that anymore. Terrorism existing has taken the place of wide-scale war in terms of getting people to be so scared and insecure that they will start to listen to the demagogues who are telling them that we need to hunker down, we need to get back to some idealized, never existed version of what our culture was back always 50 years ago. Yeah, it's, Basically, isolation, it's that isolationism mm -hmm. uh, writ large. Uh, and you're right, and it's a society that really never really existed, but it's, they, they, they somehow promote this and present it. Uh, and for, in the United Kingdom, it is very much about uh, its economic uh, and it's the migrant crisis, um, and it's, you know, the barbarians are at the gate, you know. Mm. And to an extent, there's some truth to that, not to say that they're barbarians, but there's some truth to the fact that it's happening on the gate. You know, you have the shanty towns of Calais, which is just across the English Channel, 26 miles away, where uh, hundreds and hundreds, thousands of um, refugees are having to live and, and, and trying to find some kind of existence because they want to come into the United Kingdom because their lot is so bad, wherever oh, they yeah. fled, they've just, they're so desperate. And they're there and they, they want to come in and they, they, most of them will try to come in illegally. Mm -hmm. That is a real problem. But the answer to that problem is not the xenophobia, it's not, it's to have something constructive to actually address the yeah. underlying issue. I mean, as I said, it's not to ignore the problem, but it's to address it in a, in a substantive way rather than just to demonize all these to people demonize, and yeah. sti stigmatize them yeah. all. Yeah. That's always the easy route to go. It's easy and enough to demonize someone to actually do fears. something actionable yeah. to change things, or at least make things better for the general population. And, and also, look, I'm not going to pretend that I'm a, at all an expert on the pros and cons of uh, Britain leaving the, the EU, but I've read some, and there are long-term, wide-scale economic ramifications that will affect not just the UK, but countries of the EU and outside of it. And I think that some of the people who are pushing for it are probably aware of that. Many of the people supporting it might well be doing it for very individual reasons, like fears that our immigration policy is being dictated to us by, uh, by politicians that are not of us. And so if we can just become independent, then we can have control of that. Some people will be concerned with business regulations and things of that sort. But there are such larger long-term consequences to, to the UK's economy and others that I don't think most people are thinking about necessarily. And I, by the way, really fast, I've, I've been keeping track of the, the poll of polls, and right now I believe leave is, is up five points yeah. over stay. It's a, it remain, yeah. There, there's a very real, I mean, and it has been, that's a, that's a recent development because up mm -hmm. until this point, the, the remain campaign has been in the ascendancy. By like a little bit. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that is, again, very worrisome, very troublesome. Um, they will be if 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 the UK leaves. There will be it is it, the ramifications for the rest of the world are, are significant in terms of just not not just uh, Europe but China, the United States, mm -hmm. uh, 
and, and the UK itself, the, 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 the political ramifications, the fallout from that, David Cameron will resign. There will be a new leadership election. People are arguing, to go back to your point about uh, individual uh, agendas, the, the, one of the, 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 the individuals at the forefront of the Leave campaign, Boris Johnson, was uh, actually pro-Europe up until a few weeks ago, but he see, saw an opportunity. He, he's vying, essentially vying to be the prime minister. He's vying to be leader of the Conservative With Party. With this being the vehicle With to get him there? With this being the vi vehicle to get him there. Okay. Um, if, if, and if the UK leaves, you better believe it, there will be a domino effect in other countries. France have already indicated. The Netherlands. There will be a, a domino effect. And the basis and the edifice upon which post-World War II Europe has been built will start to crumble and fall yeah. apart. Which hasn't been perfect, but it has been a source of stability and unity economically, militarily, socially in some ways. That would be a, a These are the type shame. of things that, and if, if all this is the way it appears to be, uh, it's these types of logical thought processes. If you think about how what the actual domino effect could be, they get trumped by fear and hate and disdain for the other. It's always the yeah. other and the fear that, oh, that person's going to do this to me, so therefore I'm, I'm going to ignore anything else that's logical and just go with, I don't like that person. And yeah. it never leads to the right but, approach. But ju just, but You're just shooting yourself in the foot. 